There we go. The next whole section of the chemistry paper starts with question 1.8 in multiple choice, which reads, which one of the following reactions will proceed spontaneously under standard conditions? And we, when we're using table 4B of standard reduction potentials, we know that the way to identify a spontaneous reaction is by finding a reaction in which the oxidation half reaction occurs above the reduction half reaction on this table. So we want a substance that is oxidized and then we move down the table to find something that is reduced. So we can go through these options that are given. The first option is we see that nickel goes from having a charge of plus two to being neutral. And so we can find that half reaction. We can see that that half reaction is listed here on the table of standard reduction potentials and when reading from left to right, that is a reduction half reaction. The other half reaction here is the half reaction where hydrogen goes from being H2 to forming hydrogen ions. And that means that this hydrogen half reaction over here is the oxidation half reaction, which means that this is not a spontaneous reaction. Our next option is to look at option B, where we go from bromine molecules to bromine ions. And we find that half reaction on this table of standard reduction potentials. And we see that that half reaction is the reduction half reaction where bromine is gaining electrons. And the other half reaction there is the re half reaction from chlorine ions to chlorine molecules, where we can see that that is also an oxidation half reaction, which then again shows that that is a non-spontaneous reaction. Option C sees us going from Fe3 plus ions to Fe2 plus ions. We can find these or this half reaction on the table of standard reduction potentials where this is our reduction half reaction and the other half reaction is our half reaction from iodine ions to iodine molecules which we find just slightly above that and we see that that is indeed an oxidation half reaction which means that we then create a spontaneous reaction because iron is easily oxidized excuse me iodine is easily oxidized we then move down the table to find that our iron is then easily reduced. So the correct answer here is option C. This is our spontaneous half reaction. Question eight reads, the electrochemical cell is set up under standard conditions. And we can see that we have one half cell that starts or that uses hydrogen gas and forms hydrogen ions or vice versa and the other electrode being magnesium in magnesium ions. And so what we can start by doing is we can start by identifying these half reactions on our table of standard reduction potentials, where we see that our magnesium half reaction is listed here and the hydrogen half reaction listed here. This is using table 4B. And so using these two, since this is an electrochemical cell and they've shown us that there's a voltmeter setting this up, we can immediately tell that this is a galvanic cell. Galvanic cell is one that must be spontaneous. And, in, and since it is spontaneous, then that must mean that our magnesium half reaction, because it appears above the hydrogen half reaction, that must be our oxidation half reaction and the hydrogen half reaction is then our reduction half reaction in order for the cell to be a galvanic cell that occurs or that runs spontaneously. Question 8.1 says component X completes the circuit in a cell state. One other function of component X, component X we can see is the salt bridge, which always has two functions. The function is to complete the circuit and the second function is to maintain electrical neutrality. Without that salt bridge, we wouldn't have a complete flow of charge around the circuit. And so, and we also wouldn't have electrical neutrality as we'd have a buildup of charge on either side of the circuit. So anything along the lines where we explain that it provides a path for the movement of ions or it 
ensures or maintains electrical neutrality is an acceptable answer there. Question 8.2 says define the term anode and an anode is always going to be the electrode where oxidation takes place. That is the definition as per the guideline document. It is the electrode where oxidation takes place or occurs. We remember this with a simple memory device that says well, that just an ox anode is always where oxidation takes place. Question 8.3, identify the anode in the above cell. And so because we have now already identified our oxidation and reduction half reactions, and we have said that the oxidation half reaction is our magnesium half reaction, therefore the anode is going to be the magnesium or written out magnesium. Question 8.4.1. Write down the reduction half reaction that takes place in the cell. And in this cell, we can see that our reduction half reaction, as we've said, is our hydrogen half reaction. We always read reduction half reactions from left to right, which means that our reduction half reaction is written as two hydrogen ions combine with two electrons to form hydrogen gas. Question 8.4.2, the name or the formula of the reducing agent. And so the reducing agent, we remember, is the substance that makes reduction possible. So the reduction here is the gain of electrons by hydrogen. And the only way that hydrogen can gain electrons is if magnesium is giving off those electrons. We know that magnesium, by being oxidized, is going into solution to form magnesium ions, and in so doing, giving away two electrons that then flow around the circuit that allow the hydrogen then to be reduced. So the correct answer here is that our reducing agent is the magnesium, again, Mg or written out magnesium. Important here to distinguish between magnesium and magnesium ions, it is the magnesium that is giving away the electrons that make the reduction of hydrogen possible, therefore magnesium is the reducing agent. But when asked what the oxidizing agent is, it is the hydrogen ions that are able to accept electrons that make the oxidation of magnesium possible. And so if asked what the oxidizing agent is, we would have to specify that it is the hydrogen ions, not just hydrogen. Question 8.5 asks, calculate the initial voltmeter reading of this cell under standard conditions. And so using our standard conditions, using the table of reduction potential, we use the formula as given in our formula sheet, which says that our cell potential under standard conditions is equal to the cell potential of the cathode minus the cell potential of the anode. Again, this is all done under standard conditions. This formula can also be written as the cell potential of the reduction half reaction minus the cell potential of the oxidation half reaction, where the cathode or the reduction half reaction is hydrogen and therefore has a cell potential of zero. And the oxidation or the anode is magnesium and therefore has a cell potential of negative 2.36 and so our final or our initial cell potential for this cell is 2.36 volts. Um, important to note here that this is a nice way to check that you've answered this correctly because any spontaneous cell will yield a positive cell potential. Question 8.6 reads the magnesium magnesium iron half cell is now replaced by a copper copper iron half cell. It is found that the direction of electron flow changes. Fully explain why there is a change in direction of electron flow by referring to the relative strengths of the reducing agents involved. Now, in order to do this, we need to see that our copper half reaction that they have now mentioned is this one that occurs below the hydrogen half reaction in the table of reduction potentials. 
which means that the direction of flow reverses because the hydrogen half reaction is now going to be the one that is more easily oxidized and the copper half reaction is now going to be the one that is more reduced. And so in answering this question, we would start by saying anything along the lines or well, along these lines, but we would say that hydrogen is now a stronger reducing agent. Hydrogen is now a stronger reducing agent, which we can get from the table. And that is obviously than copper. Hydrogen is a stronger reducing agent than copper. And therefore we say that the hydrogen is now oxidized and the copper is now reduced. So we simply need to explain that based on this table of standard reduction potentials, we can see that the hydrogen is now going to be more easily oxidized because it is a stronger reducing agent and therefore the copper is going to be more easily reduced. This question when marked according to the marking guidelines is fairly straightforward where component X, the salt bridge always completes the circuit and the second function that we, we have been asked to write down here is that it maintains electrical neutrality or ensures electrical neutrality or provides a path for the movement of ions. Question 8.2 is a very straightforward definition where the anode is the electrode where oxidation takes place or occurs. 8.3, the anode of this cell is magnesium. Specifically, it is magnesium, the solid. It is not magnesium ions. Question 8.4.1, when asked to identify the reduction half reaction, we need to write it down exactly as it is given in our table of standard reduction potentials and in the correct direction where we show the gain of electrons that makes it a reduction half reaction. Question 8.4.2, once again, the reducing agent, specifically magnesium and not magnesium ions, as those are two different types of agents. Question 8.5, there's one mark given for writing down the formula as it's given in the formula sheet. There's one mark for the correct substitution of each cell potential and one mark for the correct answer, provided that the correct units are given for that answer. Question 8.6. There's one mark for explaining in some way, based on this table, that hydrogen is a stronger reducing agent than copper. Um, and then the second mark is given for explaining that the hydrogen is therefore more easily oxidized. And so the electrons flow in the opposite direction.